This video was produced by Virginia View, a consortium dedicated to promoting remote sensing outreach, education, and research through funding by the America View Consortium. This video was developed in partnership with the Virginia Geospatial Extension Program and GeoTED UAS. Its contents are solely the responsibility of the authors and do not necessarily represent the official views of America View, the USGS, or other partners. The mention of trade names or commercial products does not constitute their endorsement. What is metadata? Metadata is information about data. In this chapter, we discuss various locations in ArcGIS Pro that contain information about vector and raster data, and also how to create metadata for a map project. The first place to find metadata is in the title of the file. For example, the Mid-Atlantic Cities vector layer in the table of contents probably includes cities in the Mid-Atlantic region of the United States. Many data layers can be self-explanatory. In some instances, names of vector files can help to describe the data. But if we look at the raster files in the contents, the names are not so revealing. Raster file names are comprised of information pertinent to the file. File names do provide some metadata about the imagery, but it takes some knowledge and a bit of experience to interpret these file names. If you're unfamiliar with raster file name format, there are other areas where metadata can be acquired. These areas will be discussed later. Right now, all we know is the title of the file, but we really don't know, other than boundaries or locations, what the file contains. So the next place to look is the Attribute Table. Right-click the layer's name and choose Attribute Table. Here we see additional information about the file the state of location, the county's name, the federal identification number for each county, the combined FIPS number for state and county, and the area of the county in hectares. Also, the GIS assigned two bits of data, FID, a unique identifier for a single feature within this data. And we can also see that it contains polygon data. Close the table and right-click on any of the raster names. Notice that the attribute table name is grayed out. Most rasters don't have an attribute table. Let's move on to locations of other metadata. Right-click on any of the vector layers and go to Properties. Each one of these items in the layer properties can contain metadata. First, click on the source link. We see some metadata is located here. Examine each field, for example, expand extent. Then expand spatial reference. Take time to examine all of the information or metadata about this layer's source properties. Now let's look at the metadata link. This link has additional information that is completed by the data file's creator. If an area is blank, then the creator probably didn't complete the information associated with that metadata element. Close the Layer Properties dialog box, and let's consider an example where the field names in the attribute table are not so common or easily deciphered. Open the attribute table for Mid-Atlantic weather data. Examine the fields in this attribute table. What does CDD or HDD represent? Are the definitions for these field names located on the National Weather Service website? Do you know if the abbreviations are related to weather? You may find that information in the metadata in the layer properties. Close the attribute table, right-click again, and choose View Metadata. Reading through, we find the meaning of HDD and CDD right in the description. Scrolling to the bottom, we see this metadata is displayed based on the item description metadata style. This can be changed to a different style, perhaps one that provides much more information. Click on the Project tab and then Options. Choose the metadata link 
and from the metadata style dropdown, choose FGDC CSDGM metadata, which is an abbreviation for Federal Geographic Data Committee Content Standard for Digital Geospatial Metadata. Click OK. Go back to your project. If the metadata style has not changed, click the Refresh button in the catalog window. Now scroll through the metadata to see how much additional data is present. There is much more here now. With a raster file, metadata may or may not be displayed in this manner. Consult the owner's website. Click on the Grid North raster layer and notice the message in the metadata window. Since this is an older data file, the update can be processed using ArcGIS Desktop, not ArcGIS Pro. Check ESRI online help for details on this process. The Landsat 8 Band 5 image acquired over Roanoke, Blacksburg, Virginia on May 24, 2014. Some of the metadata is in the name of the file. Landsat 8 metadata is covered in Chapter 12, information about a downloaded Landsat 8 image. Metadata can be created for your map project itself. Right-click Map and choose View Metadata. So currently, the only populated information is a screenshot of the map. To create metadata, select Edit on the ribbon. ArcGIS Pro provides notes for required information and what is missing according to the metadata style. As of the writing of the accompanying book, including all of this information is not mandatory to work with a map project. But these standards are quite comprehensive, and in many instances the government, your employer, or future employer may require use of these standards. Now just click in the box for the missing information and start typing. Complete for each field. Metadata should be completed for all projects. It adds value to the data sets that you develop, documents your work as an author, and allows you to establish use limitations that limit liability. Once the metadata is entered, click on Apply, and of course, save your project. This concludes our brief introduction to metadata. We did not cover each of the fields and information required, nor address the many different metadata style standards. The next chapter covers saving and exporting maps, and we'll conclude the introduction to ArcGIS Pro.